Okay, hello again there. This is the questions and answers on chapter 2. Question that you had. It says the four pieces of apparatus shown below are used in chemical experiments. Which statement about the apparatus is correct? So he has burette, measuring cylinder, pipette, and thermometer. And the first option is the burette measures the volume of liquid added in a titration. Um, do you think this is right or wrong? If you remember anything about what you studied last year, yes, this statement is correct. Titration was an experiment, and we, if you don't remember it, we will talk about it. That's fine. But titration was an experiment in which you used a burette to add volumes of liquid. So this is basically correct. Now, once you decide that an answer is correct, please go to the rest of the answers. Make sure that the rest is, correct, is wrong in order to make sure that your choice is correct. So, we have decided that A is correct, but let's see, if A is correct, the others must be wrong. So, B says the measuring cylinder measures the mass of a substance. Measuring cylinder measures mass? No, that's wrong. The pipette measures the volume of a gas? Is that correct? No, the pipette does not measure volumes of gases, it measures volume of liquid. The thermometer measures density. No, thermometer measures temperature. So, A is the correct answer. Okay, let's go to the next question. The next question says, a student mixes 25 centimeter cubed sample of dilute hydrochloric acid with different volumes of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Each time, the student measures the change in temperature to test if the reaction is exothermic. Which piece of apparatus is not needed? Okay, let's go back to what he's saying. A student mixes 25 centimeter cubed of acid. Now, the 25 centimeter cubed of acid, he should use a pipette because we said the pipette is something that you can use to measure volumes of liquid accurately, um, specific volumes of liquid. So, for example, 25, yes, I can use a pipette. So, and notice that he says which piece of apparatus is not needed. Sometimes he says which piece of apparatus is needed. So pay attention to the question. Is he saying which is something or which is not something? So not needed? No, I need a pipette. So C is not my answer. Now he says different volumes of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Now which one would you use to measure different volumes of aqueous sodium hydroxide? I would use a burette. That's what a burette is used for. The burette will measure different volumes of solution. And then this is the trick here. He says each time the student measures change in temperature. First of all, change in temperature means he needs the thermometer. Now, when I say each time I do the experiment, I do something. Am I measuring time? No. Each time I do something, that means that every experiment I do something. I'm not measuring time. So what I don't need is my clock. I'm not measuring time. Do we understand this? Okay. A student investigates if at 30 degrees centigrade the concentration of acid affects how rapidly it reacts with a known mass of magnesium. The student has a beaker, concentrated acid, water, and the apparatus below. Which of these pieces of apparatus does the student use? So now he's asking which one do I need? Okay, let's go back and see what he's doing. He is saying if at 30 degrees centigrade, 30 degrees centigrade, that means he will need to measure the temperature to make sure it's 30. So he will need a thermometer. So I want S, right? And then the concentration of acid. How do we measure concentration of something? I measure concentration of something by putting certain volumes of acid with certain volume of water. So I would probably need a measuring cylinder, okay? Affects how rapidly, how rapidly something happens. How rapidly something happens means uh, how fast it, the reaction is. How fast the reaction is, I will need a clock, right? A known mass of magnesium. Known mass of magnesium, that means I will need to measure the mass of the magnesium, so I will need a balance. So, which of these did I use? Actually, I used all of them. 
So uh, my answer would be D. Okay. The next question says, which row shows the pieces of apparatus used to measure 25.0 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid? Different volumes of aqueous sodium hydroxide. Accurate. And 15 centimeter cubed of water. So, okay. So, which one would I use to measure 25.0 centimeter cubed? I would probably need a pipette. So, my answer is probably C or D. I could use a burette. So, keep burette in mind. But I definitely don't need measuring cylinders. So, B is definitely not my answer. Okay? So, let's keep in mind this. Now, the volume of aqueous sodium hydroxide, he said, I want different volumes. Usually, when we do different volumes accurately, then I need a burette. So, my answer is probably C. Because C says that the first one I need a pipette, the second one I need a burette. Now, 15 centimeter cubed of water approximately, approximately means I need a measuring cylinder. So, my answer is C. Can you see that? Okay. The next question says the diagrams show liquids in a burette and a measuring cylinder. Which row shows the correct readings from the burette and the measuring cylinder? Now we said the burette is going from up to down, 0, 1, 2, 3, 27, 28 from up to down. A measuring cylinder is going from down to up, 30, 40, 50. And we said we always measure from the small number to the big number. So, in the burette, what is the answer? Is it 27 point something or 28 point something? A burette, you're measuring, you're going down. So, this is actually 27.8. So, that means my answer is A or B. Now, the measuring cylinder, we said it goes from down to up. So, 30, 40. So, this is 40 something. So, this is 40 and then 50. And we have five divisions between them. That means that each division or each line is 2. So this is actually 44, not 42. Can you see that it's 44? So my answer is B. A student puts 25.0 centimeter cubed of dilute hydrochloric acid into a conical flask. The student added 2.5 grams of solid sodium carbonate and measured the change in temperature. Which apparatus does the student need to use to obtain the most accurate results? Okay, let's go back and see what he's doing. He wants 25.0, and we said 25.0, you will need a pipette, right? The student added 2.5 grams. How will he know it's 2.5 grams? He will need a balance. Measure the change in temperature, so he needs a thermometer. So my answer is C. Can you see that? Okay, here this question says you're supposed to label these and write its name. Now, what is A? What did you write for A? We said A is a mortar. Actually, we said it is mortar and pestle. If you write mortar and pestle, that is fine because both of them are in there. But actually, his arrow is going to which one? His arrow is going to the mortar. So, it is a mortar. That's your answer. Okay, in B, what do we have? That thing that we use for stirring, we said it's called what? A glass rod. And that container is a beaker. And that thing that we use to heat the solution, Bunsen burner. Again, I'm going to remind you, when you're studying all of this, you make sure that you study the correct spelling. So you're supposed to write everything with the correct spelling. Now, in C, what is the name of that? A funnel and that thing that it's standing on that's the tripod stand and what is down there that is an evaporating dish okay okay the apparatus below was used to prepare hydrogen measure the volume of the gas produced complete the boxes to identify the piece of apparatus so what was that first apparatus on the left a flask now this one does it have graduations or not it does, then it is a measuring cylinder. If there are no graduations, it would be a gas jar. Do you remember all of this? Okay. Now, here he's saying, draw a label diagram to show a different method of collecting. Remember, what was he using to collect? He was using a measuring cylinder. And we said, if I'm collecting a gas and I want to measure 
the volume of the gas. What should I do? I should collect it using a gas syringe. So you should have a diagram similar to this. Were you able to draw that? Can you see how to draw this gas syringe and the flask and the connection between them? Okay. And he says a label. So don't forget to label. Okay, don't just draw and leave it. You need to label it. Okay, complete the boxes to name the apparatus. We said what's the name of that first apparatus on top? That is a condenser. And that other one is a tripod stand. Were you able to know these names? This is basic chemistry. You have to know this. Okay, ethene can be prepared by passing ethanol vapor over hot aluminum oxide. Complete the boxes to show, to show what? To show the chemicals not the name of the apparatus to show the chemicals. So what is what are we supposed to be starting with? He's saying ethene can be prepared from what? From ethanol vapor and hot aluminum oxide. You should know that ethanol originally is a liquid. In order to get it into a vapor, I just need to heat it. But originally it's a liquid. And we said if I want to put a liquid in that test tube that is horizontal, how can I put it? I have to put it soaked in the mineral wool. So that's why I have a mineral wool, to soak the liquid or to hold the liquid. Now, I want to pass this ethanol vapor over hot aluminum oxide. So that other thing in the middle of the test tube must be aluminum oxide. Show on the diagram with two arrows where the heat is applied. Now, where are we supposed to be heating? He wants ethanol vapor, so I am supposed to heat the ethanol, right? So change it into vapor. And then he wants to pass it over hot aluminum oxide. So I need, so this is how you draw it. You draw two arrows pointing up under the place where you're supposed to be heated. The next question was, why must the delivery tube be removed from the water before the heating is stopped? Remember, we said this chapter is dealing with the important things in, that you need to know for paper six. Paper six deals with experiments and precautions and uh, things that are related to your experiments. So this question says, why must the delivery tube be removed from the water? Remember what did we say? We said if I'm heating that horizontal tube and I have finished the experiment, I don't just close the Bunsen burner and leave everything as it is. We said if we do that, the water in the trough or in the beaker will suck back into the hot tube and break it. So I don't want that to happen. So we said if I'm doing this experiment in the lab, I'm supposed to remove the delivery tube from the water first, then close the Bunsen burner or stop the heating. Do we understand that? So why, does, why should we do that? Why must the delivery tube be removed? We said to avoid back suction of water into the hot tube, which would break it. Okay. The apparatus below can be used to prepare and collect a gas which is insoluble in water. We said if I want to collect a gas that is insoluble on, uh, in water, then I can collect it over water. So he says complete the diagram to show how this gas could be collected over water. Remember again, he says label. Remember that when you draw, check. Is, does he want labels or he doesn't want labels? Sometimes he says no labels are required, for example. But here you need to label it. So this is how we collect the gas over water. You need a delivery tube going into a trough or a beaker containing water. And you have an inverted container. It can be a test tube or it can be a measuring cylinder or it can be a gas jar. Okay. But originally we said that container will be filled to the top with water. And as the gas bubbles through, the gas collects over the water. Do we understand that? Okay. A student reacted steam with heated magnesium ribbon using the apparatus below. A white solid was left in the boiling tube and hydrogen gas was collected. Complete the box to show, to show the chemical used. So what do you think he will have in his mineral wool? If he wants steam, what is steam? Steam is the gaseous state of water. So I want water as a gas. So that is called either steam or water vapor. So in order to get steam or water vapor, my mineral wool must have what? It must have water, right? Okay. Indicate on the diagram with two arrows where the heat is applied. 
Now, first of all, I have water on my mineral wall, but I don't want water. I want steam, so I need to heat under the mineral wall that has water. Also, over uh, at the top of the uh, question, he says a student reacted steam with what? With heated magnesium ribbon, so I need to heat the magnesium ribbon. So these are the places where you're supposed to have two arms. Okay? So just why the boiling tube containing the magnesium often cracks on cooling. So if he leaves everything as it is, we said the tube containing the magnesium will crack. Why will it crack? Because he probably forgot to remove the delivery tube and the water sucked back into the tube. So this is due to back suction of water into the hot tube. Okay. The other question says alkenes can be made by cracking long chain alkene. A student used, if you just go on, alkenes and alkenes, if you're not familiar with them, we're going to do them in uh, a chapter on organic. But just go on and see what he's asking about. A student used the apparatus below to demonstrate cracking. Complete the box to show the apparatus used. We set this wide beaker that has water. You can label it as a beaker, but actually it is called trout. Okay, so just the purpose of the mineral wall, again, he has mineral wall in the tube that is horizontal and the mineral wall is supposed to have a liquid alkane, so the mineral wall is to hold the liquid. Okay, the next question says the student decided to make some elderberry wine using the apparatus. The student carried out the following method, the elderberries were crushed, the crushed elderberries and so on. So just the purpose of the airlock. Do you remember what was the purpose of the airlock? We said an airlock is this bent tube at, in the mouth of the container. It contains water, that's all it has. But this presence of water, it allows the gas to go out of the container, but no air can push itself out. Remember that when the gas is bubbling inside the fermenting mixture that he has there, the gas bubbles all over and forces itself out through the water. But the air outside cannot force itself through the water. So the purpose of the airlock is to prevent air from entering. At the same time, I want to allow the carbon dioxide to escape. What apparatus could be used in step one? Let's go back to step one. What was step one? The elderberries were crushed. We, when we crush a solid, I need mortar and pestle. Draw a label diagram of the apparatus used to separate the crushed elderberries from the mixture. So the crushed elderberries are solids that are floating inside the mixture. Which method do I use to separate this? This is actually filtration. So this is um, the, uh, <coughs> sorry, the apparatus for filtration. You have a funnel with a filter paper in it and this goes into a flask, so when you pour the mixture through the funnel, the berries remain in the filter paper and everything, everything goes down into the flask, which is called the filtrate. Now, why was the yeast in step three not added until the liquid was at room temperature? This has to do with using yeast and a previous knowledge of uh, how do you use yeast. We said yeast are living cells. So when I put them at very high temperature, what will happen? The yeast contains enzymes in it. The enzymes will be denatured and the yeast will be killed. So when we're using living cells like yeast, you have to cool the solution before you add it. This is to a to prevent denaturing the enzymes present in the yeast. Okay. Sulfur dioxide is a poisonous gas which is denser than air and soluble in water. Sulfur dioxide can be prepared by adding dilute hydrochloric acid to sodium sulfite and warming the mixture. Now, the, the, you have this setup and the, the question says, identify and explain three mistakes in the diagram. Let's go back. Sulfur dioxide is a poisonous gas. And I will tell you that we said if we are doing any experiment that contains a gas, that means I should be doing this experiment originally in what? In a fume cup. Okay. And then he says the gas is denser than air. So what's wrong with his diagram? We said if we are collecting a gas that is denser than air, should I collect it by upward delivery as he drew it? 
or should it be collected by downward delivery? Downward. So if the gas is denser, he shouldn't collect it like this. He should have the uh, flask pointing down or the delivery tube pointing down, which we call downward delivery. So that is one mistake, that the gas should be collected by downward delivery. Why? Because it is denser than air. Okay. The other thing he tells me about the gas is that it is what? It is soluble in water. So if my first flask is giving out sulfur dioxide gas, he is passing that into a tube containing what? Containing water. If he passes the gas through the water, the gas will dissolve in the water and there will be nothing to be collected. So the other mistake that he has is the fact that he passed the gas through water. Okay? So, uh, we need a third mistake, sorry. So, what was the third mistake? Can you see where he's heating? His, heat, his arrow for heat is pointing where? It's pointing under the water. The experiment says sulfur dioxide can be prepared by adding dilute hydrochloric acid to sodium sulfite and warming the mixture. So I'm supposed to be warming the mixture of hydrochloric acid and sodium sulfide. So my heat should be under what? My heat should be under the flask, not under the test tube, right? So the three mistakes. First of all, the position of the heat. We said the position of the heat should not be under the uh, test tube. It should be under the flask. And the other mistake was the gas should not be passed through water because he says it is soluble in water. The third mistake was the fact that the gas is collected by downward delivery, not upward, because the gas is denser than air. Now, which precaution did we say we should take when carrying out this experiment? We said do the experiment in a fume cupboard. This is an experiment that is giving out a dangerous poisonous gas. I have to do it in a fume cupboard. Okay, so that is the end of these questions. Um, I hope you were able to do most of the questions.